A couple of the great new features in Photoshop CS3 is the Quick Selection tool and also the Refine Edge after we've made a selection. You can however also use the Refine Edge after the selection has been converted into a layer mask. Just come up to the Select menu and choose Refine Edge. And here we can use the Refine Edge dialog box to modify the mask. Here I'm in the Standard Preview. Now normally the Standard Preview comes with the Marching Ants. Here I can go to Show Selection Edges. When I'm using this to modify the edge of masks, however, I switch off the Marching Ants so I can get a clear view of the edge detail. Again, we'll come up to the View menu, go down to Show, and switch off the Selection Edges. I can now proceed to use the Contract Expand slider to modify the edge. Here, increasing the fringe pixels and moving in and removing those fringe pixels. You can see we're working in reverse here because as you can see I've applied the layer mask to the new background rather than to the subject layer. Let's go back into the Refine Edge dialog box and we can look at some of the other ways we can view this edge. We can view it as Quick Mask. We can come in and view the selection against a black mat or a white mat. The problem that I've incurred by using this black mat and white mat preview is the way that I'm working with this image with the mask on the new background. So we're actually getting the opposite view that is intended for us to work this image. For instance I can't see the edge of the subject because the subject is the white mat. This is a slight problem when we're working in the refine edge. There, are a, there is however a workaround for this and that is to come into the quick mask mode and double click the quick mask icon. In the quick mask options we can select the color to white if we want to view the subject against a white mat and select OK. We increase the opacity to 100% and we can switch between the masked areas and the selected areas and select OK. Now here's the view that I actually wanted when I clicked on the white mat earlier. What we've done is we've changed the options of the quick mask to adopt this white mat view. And now I can proceed to use the contract expand sliders to work that edge again once more. Let's take a look at another image. This one also has a layer mask and we can come up to the Select menu and again choose Refine Edge. Here the settings we created in the Quick Mask can also be used and are remembered by the Refine Edge dialog box. We can switch between selected areas and masked areas to control which portion we want to see the white mat in. One of the limitations of the Refine Edge, although there is a vast improvement on some of the selection modifications we could make in CS2, is we still can't make a localized selection of an edge to work independently of the rest of the edge. In Photoshop CS3 Essential Skills I demonstrate a range of techniques in some montage projects where we can work on just a localized portion of the mask independent of the rest of the edge. This involves making use of the selection tools, adjustments and also filters. One of the great new features in Photoshop CS3 is we now have a black and white adjustment layer which is an improvement on the channel mixer used previously. Here I can just switch on this black and white adjustment layer I created previously. If I double click the icon you can see the settings I've used to create this custom black and white. We can move the sliders to control the mix of colors but it's in fact it's far easier just to come into the image area and then click and drag left or drag right and here you can see the blue slider is moving as we pull down the blues in this image and if I click on the warm yellow colored rocks click and drag right you can see the yellow slider moving to the right. Although this is a fabulous new feature there is a limit to how far we can push this before artifacts start appearing on the edges and also in the, in the areas of continuous tone. In Photoshop CS3 I outlined some fabulous techniques using the channels 
and pulling in the information as layers. And here you can see the final result of doing a manual adjustment. And as you can see, we can still push it a, f a lot further than the black and white adjustment feature can. In the Photoshop CS3 Essential Skills book, I outline how we can use the channel information. Here I've used the red channel to increase the drama of the sky. And I've used the blue channel as the basis of a mask to mask the foreground rocks and beach. Here again I've used the inverted mask to protect a dodge and burn layer. And I've also used blend modes. Here a linear gradient and a vignette to finish the final outcome. One of the improved features in Photoshop CS3 is the High Dynamic Range automated feature. This allows us to merge different exposures so we can get detail in both bright highlights and deep shadows by taking more than one exposure and then merging the data into a single file. The limitations of using this technique however is nothing must move in between the individual exposures. In the Photoshop CS3 Essential Skills textbook I demonstrate a technique where we can get over this fact. Here on this image we have these ducks happily swimming along the river. But unfortunately between the split second between the first and ex second exposure we then incur ghost images of these ducks. In the technique in the Essential Skills book I use smart objects and then use the features in the ACR such as the retouch tool and a, and a sophisticated mask to merge the independent exposures. One of the problems of HDR is we often end up with information in both the highlights and shadows but the mid-tone contrast is quite nearly always flat. Again in the Photoshop CS3 textbook I show how we can expand the mid-tone contrast and yet still retain detail in the bright highlights and deep shadows. The supporting DVD that is included with the Photoshop CS3 Essential Skills book has over 8 hours of movie tutorials, high resolution JPEG, TIFF and RAW images to support all of the imaging projects, multi-layered Photoshop files of all the completed projects, a stock library of royalty free images, actions and presets to fast track your editing workflows. The book is available from Amazon.com, FocalPress.com or markgaylor.com.